the craziest thing that's ever happened to me on tour was in Tempe, Arizona, when we were at Arizona State University um, doing a club date. On, like basically we were on Rock the Bells at the time and there was like an in-between date in between like one of the shows and um, you know we were doing it for a friend who runs a, a sneaker boutique it was his birthday so we did a club date on campus at a Cherry Lounge it was a cool night it started off very cool like we, we got in um, we went to the boutique went shopping got some gear ate you know what I'm saying? Like he's showing us around the campus. We like, yo, this is a great school. This is a party school. We're gonna, it's gonna be a dope night. This, the show is sold out. On top of which, we get money. So we like, all right, it's gonna be a great day. And then, you know, it just turned all bad. We we perform, and security had told us beforehand that they were gonna be looking out for us. So we met like the head of security and maybe four guards. And they were, they basically told us like we had a booth, we had bottles, we had promo models in the, in the booth and everything is set up. Anything you guys need, you come see us. Anybody gives you a problem, you come see us. And so we're like, all right, this is really going to be fresh. Like they're really looking out for us. Lo and behold, these are the same people who after the show is done, you know, ended up causing a melee. And it was like, wow, like it, it, it really threw us off because we didn't know that, I guess, by Arizona law, you're not supposed to have liquor after, like, I say, 1 o'clock, 1 a.m. And so they're like, okay, we well, have to have a waitress pour your drinks, and your drinks have to be assigned to you or whatever, what have you. The waitress has to come and, and pour it, you know what I mean? And at a certain point in the night, we were just operating like regular city kids, you know what I'm saying? Double O's from New York, I'm from Chicago, we're not used to that. So when you give us bottles, we just roam around with them. We just walk around with them, pour drinks for people, whatever. Somehow Double O wanders off from the booth and I'm still kind of partying. I don't know what's going on. I'm figuring he's just doing his thing on the other side of the club. This girl comes up to me and she says, yeah, I think uh, your partner just body slammed a security guard. And I'm like, nah, that didn't, ha like, that didn't happen. Like She's like, no, like seriously, he body, he body slammed the security guard. So I'm, I'm halfway like not sober. So I'm just like trying to like really digest what's going on. And I'm like, where is this going on? Where is this happening? Then like two or three other people come and they're like, yeah, you need to go check your man. Like, I think they took him outside. So I go outside, Double O's whole face is just bloody, but he's laughing, like balling, like laughing. I'm like, yo, what this dude has to be delirious. Like he, get him to a hospital, what's going on? So I'm like, double O, what happened? He's like, he's like, a stupid bouncer tries to take my bottle. I body slammed him. I'm like, okay, but what happened? He's like, he got on the walkie-talkie and calls his other homies. So, then, so mind you, he's in handcuffs, sitting on the, sitting on the corner, like bloody as shit, just laughing, like laughing his ass off, like. Knowledge, I'm about to own the club. I'm about to own the club. I'm, they fucked up. I'm about to own the club. I'm like, I'm like, okay, double O. Like, I don't know what's going on, but we need to get this man some medical attention because look like his eyes are about to pop out of the socket. I'm like, yo, what's going on? So I'm running up to the police officer. I'm like, yo, get him to a hospital. Like, okay, you got him in cuffs, but he needs medical attention. Like, you probably messed. Like, his vision is messed up. Cops not really listening to me. He's just brushing me off. Like, ah, we're trying to figure out what's going on. And I think your, your friend was a part of the melee and he might've been the main perpetrator. And blah, blah, blah. I'm just all of this Charlie Brown talk. I'm like, I'm not really trying to hit it. I run up to double O. I'm like, yo, did you get into it with the cops or was it a bouncer? So he's pointing, he points at the bouncer. The bouncer's sitting there just smiling like, ha ha ha. I fucked your boy up. Nothing's going to happen. I'm like, all right. That's what's up. I'm gonna take a picture of you. So I take my camera phone, I take a picture of the bouncer that he points to. I'm like, okay, now I know who did it, that's you. And now I'm taking a picture of double O. I'm like, all right, so now we got evidence of, of how he looked at his worst, like right after the thing happens. Mind you, it's people who came to the concert to see us, the whole time all of this is happening, they're saying you're getting the wrong dude. How can you arrest the person that's performing? Like, he wasn't causing any harm. Everybody's like, yo, the bouncer, the bouncers beat him up, like, what are y'all doing? At this point, our, our manager, Dan, comes outside, and he's worse off than I was. Like, he didn't get informed of anything. So it's like, by the time he comes out, 
I'm halfway arguing with the with the cop about getting double O some medical attention. And at that point, Dan like intervenes and tries to talk to the to the cop because I'm heated, so I'm talking to him in a in a different tone. And so I walk off for a second. And one of my childhood friends actually goes to ASU. So like I'm, I went over and talked to her for a second. And the funny thing is she was she was like, yo, the Tempe police they don't play, like the quickest thing they'll do is like arrest people and they just put them into the tank and they don't care. And so I'm like, all right, well, that's cool. Don't worry about it. We're gonna get something to eat after this is all over. Like we're gonna get double O to the hospital. Everything's gonna end up all right. And so I walked back over to basically see what happens. Next thing I know, I'm tackled, like like office linebacker style. Somebody just tackles me, puts pepper spray on my face, and I'm handcuffed. And this happened very quickly. The dude just rushed me like a linebacker. I didn't know what went on. By the time I got up and really seen what was happening, like I had cuffs on me and I'm sitting right next to Double O and Double O's laughing like, you're gonna own the club with me, knowledge. You're gonna own the club with, we're both gonna own the club. Like, we're gonna own this place, knowledge. And I'm just tripping. I'm tripping, but I'm like, okay, it's three of us. So at least our manager is gonna be cool. So they take me into the tank. Finally, they get double O into an ambulance. I'm sitting there like, oh, what the fuck am I gonna do? I'm like, at least we got show money. Dan has the show money. He just bail it. We're good. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna have to spend a night in, in jail and shit. But at least, like, I don't gotta tell nobody. Like, we're just gonna get in and out. Maybe, like, you know, I might have a little something happen, but I'll be good by the morning. So I'm laying there, and I notice one by one, the promoter ends up in the tank with me. The DJ ends up in the tank with me. All these people who basically picked us up from the airport, took us to our hotel, and put together the show are in the tank with us. So I'm like, oh. Like, what is going on? Like, I don't even know who to contact. And I'm like, please just don't let Dan end up being one of these people that gets thrown in this tank. I guess one of the cops in the front is like, oh, we're about to leave. It's about to be, you know, we're about to take these guys to the tank. We got enough for the night. I guess they meet a quota for how many people they arrest for the weekend outside of the black club or whatever. It is what it is. He's like, oh, we got one more. Open it up and it's fucking Dan. And I'm like, oh, now our fucking manager is arrested. We're all fucked up. Double O's at the hospital. Nobody knows which hospital. And he's, we don't know how he got, we don't know what's going on. We don't know anybody in Tempe, Arizona. It was terrible. So I, we're all in the little lockup cell, holding cell with everybody from the party. It's like the party was taken to jail, basically. Like 30 people got arrested. So everybody's in the, in the holding cell talking about all that they were about to do if they would have continued partying. Cause it was a fun night until that point. So it was funny, but like, I'm sitting there like, oh, and I, so I'm calling my parents. Got a call like, and they're like looking through their like Rolodex trying to find like the one cousin we have in Phoenix to see if they know somebody who can help with Tempe. And it was just, it was ridiculous. And I'm sitting in a cell with like a bum who got caught for like smoking weed in the park. Cause I guess they pick up bums. That's that's the other way they meet their quotas, people at the club and bums. So I'm sitting there and it's the worst experience ever. Like I swear, like everything in jail is dairy products. Like they gave me like a cheese sandwich with milk. You know what I'm saying? A cheese stick with like cheese crackers. I'm like, yo, like, what's up with all this fucking cheese? Me, like, I don't want this. <laughs> like, like, he gave me a, a cheese milkshake and shit. I'm just like, what the? F like, I'm not eating any of this shit. So I went the whole time without eating. I was trying to sleep my way through it, but somehow I think the guards just wasn't fucking with me because I think I was like the last person to go. Uh, I seen all these people from the party go before me. And then finally, I, I was like, can I pay with my credit card? Like, now. And then uh, the guard's like, oh, you have a credit card? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, you can go upstairs. Immediately, uh, like, the minute I said that, they sent me upstairs, swiped my card, and put me back in the cell. Like, oh, but you still have to wait to see the judge. But we're going to let you go. But you got to wait to see the judge. So I had to wait until basically over 24 hours in a holding cell. And this entire time, I have no idea what Double O's going through. I'm just like, what the fuck is this guy? I don't even know what happened to him. 
and I get out, the minute I get out, the promoter is sitting there, and the promoter from the show is sitting there, and he's just all, you know, whatever, and, and he's acting as if he didn't even know what happened. And I find out, like, he basically left the premises when he's seen all of the stuff going down. Um, the main promoter, like, the dude whose birthday it was. And I'm like, oh, like, you had a nice night, huh? He's like, yeah, yeah, I heard you guys got in some trouble. You think we got in some trouble? <laughs> it's 24 hours later. It's like, are you serious? And I got hit with, like, an ill ticket, you know what I'm saying? Obstruction of justice, all types of stupidness. I'm like, ah. Oh. It's absurd. I paid my way, basically, out of it. Um, I ended up doing some community service for it. Double O did some community service for it. And I guess the dude who owns that club owns like three or four other clubs and was facing like, a, facing other suits. So he was like trying to avoid those people. And so our case was kind of like the bottom of the totem pole. But it's, that's probably the craziest, craziest experience that we've had. And we missed the show in LA. We missed going to X Games and performing. We missed going to the Rock the Bells in DC because of it. And I was pretty teed off. <laughs> missed a lot of opportunities. And I had a whole duffel bag full of clothes taken. It was just it was just all together like a bad night. <laughs> but we bounced back. But that's probably that's definitely by far the craziest experience I've ever had on tour. Funny thing though is when we got to New York at Rock the Bells and we performed. We brought Rick, uh, Slick Rick on stage with us because Double O had an eye patch and had a, 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 a Slick Rick t-shirt on. That was kind of like our little gimmick, but I don't know how Double O did that because he had a knee brace, he had crutches and an eye patch and he still wanted to perform. So, I mean, that was dedication, but yeah, that was definitely the craziest story. Double O had a, a, a myriad of injuries, but like the main injury he had was basically his eye, when, like I said, his eye almost came out the socket. Like, it, that's how crazy he looked. Even though he was laughing and he didn't realize what was going on, I'm like, you look crazy right now. He broke like three bones in his, like around his orbital socket or whatever. And it actually affected his, he's already halfway blind. He had contacts, glasses, all that stuff. But like, no, he's seriously, his vision in one eye is like blurry now. So he's had like three surgeries and it's, it's a little bit better, but it's not what it was. It's still not what it was. And he still looks like he's halfway winking at you all the time. So I think he's practiced the art of like pretending like he's squinting with his other eye because he knows his other eye is halfway closed all the time. And he doesn't want to look like he's like he's crazy. So he just looks like he's squinting, like he can't see. He's had a lot of cosmetic surgeries on that. On that. And, you know, he thinks he's the prettiest dude in hip hop. So that was like the worst thing that could have happened to him. Cause he's like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a vendetta out against the light-skinned brother. And you know what I'm saying? They don't like pretty dudes. And my hair is too luxurious. So they wanted to like get me in some way. Like it was some type of conspiracy. Cause I'm the, pr I'm the pretty dude. I'm just like, you're a funny guy. He, I couldn't have took all of that in stride the way he took it in stride. Cause even when we got to the hospital, he was cracking jokes. And I'm like, do you remember what you were saying? He's like, yeah, I'm, we're gonna own the club. Like, we're owning that club. Like, we're gonna turn it into a strip club. Like, we're owning that club. I'm like, you're nuts. Like, I don't know if I, if, if I was him, I would've, I don't know. I don't know how I would've reacted to that, but he, I definitely wouldn't have performed at Rock the Bells like a week later. Like, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> But he's a trooper. That was that's by far the craziest thing that's ever happened, and I hope nothing surpasses it. To be honest with you, as far as cost, okay, basically we made five thousand for that show, um, of which we st we had to stay like three extra days. So I paid for a hotel room for three extra nights. Then we had to pay for like food because obviously we don't know anybody out there. I paid a lawyer, to, basically this lawyer that um, was a family friend told me, you give me $2,000, it's going away. It won't be, it's going away. You don't even have to come back to Arizona. So that was music to my ears. So I gave him two stacks. And I was like, okay, that's taken care of. But at the end of the day, we made no money off that show. <laughs> like it was over, I paid $500 bond. That's what they swiped on my credit card. But I got that back which was a nice little present because I was like, I kind of just forgot about it because I felt like I took a loss. 
I took such a loss. I was like, this is, and on top of which, I messed up because I was hungover from the night before, so I missed my flight going to Tempe from New York. So, or from Chicago rather, I'm sorry. And so I had to pay like $200 change fee to get to Tempe, but I'm like, oh, we're making money. I'm good, it's cool, we we'll make 5,000, it's good. No, didn't happen. So I had to pay the change fee and I had to pay my flight back because the flight that was booked for us was, was a wrap. <laughs> so it was, it was, cause we were supposed to fly to LA cause we had a show the next day. And I'm like, oh, forget all of this. I'm going back to Chicago. So I just went out of pocket and paid for a flight to Chicago. So all in all, I probably spent four, $4,000 just in that four day span of just trying to get out of there and just didn't feel like dealing with Arizona. Yeah, Mike came out with like $300. <laughs> like of that from that whole like experience. Somehow Dan argued with the cop. So his bond was fifteen hundred dollars of which he didn't have on him. So me and, and Double O lent him money. At the end of the day we just had a big pool of money and it was just kinda like, okay, what is going towards what? Cause we had made some money, um we had, like we were like on the move, so we had it was just like okay. How much money did you have before you got here? How much money you have before you got? We just pulled that together, took the show money, pulled that together, and just tried to figure something out. And then I, I called, I called my mom, like, withdraw this from my account. It was just a lot going on that whole time. It was just, it was a lot going on. But when it all was said and done, Double O was like, just keep it, just keep everything, cause I'm gonna stay here and. I don't know, it was weird. Like he was just like, you I want you to go home. So he just like keep everything. It was only like thirty it was only like three hundred dollars. Double O's bills, honestly, I know just from that weekend, it was probably I'd say like he might be up to like seventy five, eighty thousand dollars in hospital bills. Like on some like real like they had to perform surgery on his eye socket. You know what I mean? So it was like and then just for the cosmetic aspects of it. He had somebody look at it once he got back to New York, and then his vision is still blurry. So it's like he has to have corrective eye surgery that still isn't corrected, but it's like it's semi-corrected. He's functional, but it's not where he was. You know what I mean? So yeah, if it wasn't for insurance and us all being together like a family and supporting each other, that could have been the worst weekend ever. Because. It was just three of us out there, and we had really no support system. It'd be one thing if that was in New York or Chicago, but we're in Tempe, Arizona, and we had no resources. Like, we weren't even in Phoenix. Like, Phoenix is an about two hours, hour and a half away, but we were stuck. We was, we was, we, we weren't necessarily shitting in our pants. We was just mad that we missed another show date, mad that we missed, we missed two show dates that were important and we missed a lot of important meetings. We missed a lot on a lot of money that was that could have been waiting at, at those specific venues. And it just slowed us up and it kind of put a damper on our summer because we were like, oh, Rock the Bells, X Games, this, that, the third. All this stuff was starting to come together and string together nice. And it was just like, yeah, slow down, son, <laughs> slow down. And yeah, to this day, I learned a lesson. It's just like club dates, do the show, leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, don't linger to closing. You know what I mean? Like, because that gives stuff time to escalate and stupid things happen when things escalate to that point. Because at that point, we weren't really, like, it was fun, but it was like that show, that party wasn't worth what it ended up costing us. So it was like, you know, somebody asks you for a bottle, give it back. We don't really need it like that. It's not worth arguing. It's not worth discussion. It's like, okay, it's your club. You want your bottle here? We'll leave. It's cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like confrontation isn't the best way to go. But Double O's from New York. New Yorkers, they don't know sometimes how to be cool and just lay back. Like his whole thing was like, we just got done performing. Like, you don't know who I am. And that 
you don't know who I am. That's, this is the last uh, fighting words. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Once you say that to a bouncer who's roided up, waiting for somebody to fight with, wrong move. But to this day, Double O will tell you about how he body slammed this 250 pound dude, and if he didn't call for backup, it was over. And that's kind of his story, and he's sticking to it. <laughs> but I'm like, yo, but it cost us like four grand, so what the fuck does it really matter?